This podcast does not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or Department of Defense. Welcome back to the Salt for Life podcast, and I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Olivia Nunn. Today, our special guest is Lauren Lebrano. She is the Director of Veterans Career Program at an organization called Paralyzed Veterans of America. And she has been a friend of mine for the last few years that once I got into this veteran space at Soldier for Life, and I've seen her at almost every single veteran event and uh, super excited that you are here talking with us at Soldier for Life. So Lauren, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. No, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So, you know, Lauren, I remember I met you, man, it must have been um, one of two events. Either I met you at at Ginger Miller's event, Mm -hmm. or I met you in Florida (laughs) at Student Veterans of America event, one of those Mm -hmm. two events. It was definitely around that time. And, you know, they do kind of all blend together where you actually meet people, but it's, we probably met each other at both events and it was just a little overwhelming because they're both such great events. So yeah, great events, great organizations doing great things, but let's dig into first What is Paralyzed Veterans of America? Why is that organization different and unique compared to the other military and veteran support organizations that are out there? Absolutely. I'm so glad you asked this question. So Paralyzed Veterans of America is a veteran-led, membership-run organization. We support veterans with spinal cord injuries and disorders. And the disorders is, is really unique in terms of MS, ALS, other things that affect your spine. And I don't know that everyone is familiar with that aspect of what we do. But we've been around since 1946. We're about to launch our 75th anniversary And we provide a ton of programs and services to ensure that these veterans live, can live full independent lives. So that includes not just the veterans career program that I work on, but we have a sports and rec program. We have an architecture program and that's pretty unique in this space. We have a fantastic advocacy uh, and government relations program that ensures that again, veterans with spinal cord injuries and disorders can live independent lives. So we advocate for everything from car grants to housing grants and caregiver support and things like that. Um, Pretty unique. One of the other things I really like about this organization is, you know, we consider ourselves to be a civil rights organization that advocates on behalf of all veterans and people with disabilities, because it doesn't just stop with the spinal cord injured or the the wheelchair user. So we want to make sure that there's access for everyone with a disability. And that's a little bit unique in this space is that that focus. So when you talk about the space that you're in, so you're talking about um, the conversation of being well-abled versus not well-abled. And the other organization that comes to mind, I think is the one that most people think about in their head is the Wounded Warrior Project. It's a great organization. They do great things. But what is the slight difference between Paralyzed Veterans of America versus what Wounded Warriors does? So we are, first of all, all generations, all eras. So we were founded by World War II veterans who came home with spinal cord injuries. And this was really the first generation that not just didn't just survive, but thrived um, following a spinal cord injury. I mean, before that, only really about 10 percent of veterans with or individuals with a spinal cord injury survived. So not only did this group it become fully engaged. They created some pretty cool things like wheelchair basketball, um, advocacy, like we see it today and things like that. So that's the big difference I would say is that, that, uh, era depth. Um, and again, that focus on advocacy around ADA. So not many people know this, but curb cuts that you have outside that, you know, you may have used, uh, with your suitcase when you're traveling or with a stroller, PVA was behind that. Our architecture program was behind that. So we take a very, very in-depth look at these needs and what we need to do, how we can ensure, again, an accessible world for, for all veterans and people with disabilities. So, you know, again, it's just a little bit of that length of time and that intense focus on, on civil rights. That's really neat. Uh, I did not know about the civil rights part. Um, I did know you guys have been very active behind the scenes in a lot of the things that our nation 
whether they're a veteran or not, get to take advantage of, right? Mm -hmm. How the infrastructure is built or not built and how we take um, a look at, are we paying the due diligence to a community that does need advocacy? So that is really cool. So you've been with Paralyzed Veterans of America for a while. And recently, you guys had did some branding name change on your program. So let's dig into that. What sure. specifically is your program within that umbrella? Okay. So I, again, I'm glad you asked because this is something that we're really trying to hit on right now. So the program that I, I work on, uh, the Veterans Career Program, used to be called PAVE. Um, it stood for Paving Access for Veterans Employment. And the name change was for a few reasons. One, we wanted to really align ourselves very well with PDA, the rest of the programs and services. We also wanted to clearly demonstrate what we do. So we are more than an employment program. We really a, take a career approach to this um, in, in a few different ways. So we focus, of course, on paid employment, whether it's full-time or part-time, and making sure that veterans with disabilities and spinal cord injuries are have a career path where, they, again, they can thrive and be as independent as possible. But we also focus on education, um, whether that's a four-year degree or taking a couple of certificate courses or starting out at your community college. We wanted to make sure that that was included. We also help individuals with volunteer opportunities. Sometimes when uh, somebody unfortunately has a catastrophic disability, it, it throws everything upside down a little bit. And what we want to do is create a path towards meaningful engagement. And for some people, that's going to be volunteering. And maybe volunteering, you know, we may be right now working with the future president of PVA, of Petron, uh, Paralyzed Veterans of America, or somebody who's going to go down to the VA and be part of VAVS, Whatever that engagement and success looks like, we want to be part of it and help un others understand the path forward. So that's why we ultimately went from PAVE to Veterans Career Program, just to be more inclusive. So you talked earlier in the intro about the depth of the eras of veterans that can utilize your program. But I want to go into that one part. Specifically, when we talk to organizations one thing that we like to highlight at Soldier for Life is who can access your program? Because there are big differences. Are you a current, you know, war and terror person? Are you somebody that's from the Vietnam era? Oh, by the way, did you have to go overseas or not? So who can access the programs there at PVA? Uh, for my program, any veteran. No matter what their injury, no matter when they served, whether they're service connected or non-service connected. Same for sports and recreation. Again, we do focus on veterans with disabilities, but we're not going to turn somebody away. We're going to we're there to help them with whatever they need. Benefit services is the same. So for my program, the Veterans Career Program, we have Vietnam era veterans that we're working with right now. You know, unemployment has hit them extremely hard. We talk a lot about transitioning service members. And yes, it's a population that we absolutely do need to support and engage. But there's a whole range of veterans who are who are really having a hard time finding meaningful careers where, you know, they're not underemployed, they're not underutilized, they have every opportunity to work at the level that we need them in, in this country to work, right? So I want that experience out there. I think another thing that separates us again is somebody may have served 20, 30 years ago, and then they're in an accident, unfortunately, today. We're going to be there tomorrow by their bedside, engaging them and giving them, you know, that short brief, hey, we're here to help. You don't have to focus on it right now, but we're going to be with you every step of the way along this, you know, some of them call it a bump in the road or a change in plan. So we're going to be there for all eras, all situations, everything to make sure that they're supported. So in that scenario, you talked about being there at their bedside when, when an event happens and there's a change in their life. And specifically, so we're talking kind of the older generation, right? Not, not the current transitioning uh, guys and girls right now, but more so those that have already hung up their uniform years ago. With that being said, how does somebody find your program? Other than, hey, I'm listening in, I'm going to go Google <laughs> this. How right. did they find your program and get access to your program? So uh, you can go to our website, pva.org backslash veterans career program. We have a form there uh, that, that you can fill out. It gives you uh, 
ask for some very high level information, and then we take a look from there. You know, the foundation of our program is our one on one support for, again, members of the, the veteran community. So it could be uh, a service member, a uh, transitioning service member, a veteran, their family members, or their caregivers. And we provide high touch one on one engagement that's very in depth to help them. So vocational counseling, um, where we're gonna work with somebody on their resume, LinkedIn, all those functional things that you think of, but really what we're also doing behind the scenes is helping people figure out what it is that they wanna do. What's the path that makes sense for them, especially taking into consideration any disabilities they have, any other challenges in their background, barriers to employment, whether it's homelessness, or you know they have a history of substance abuse. So it's a lot of it's the confidence building that we do that's really important um, with that one on one. And we have we have uh, typically have six vocational rehab counselors and two employment analysts across the country who help, who help with this. Wow. So you guys are headquartered here in D.C., correct? Mm-hmm. That's right. Do you have any other offices? Because you said around the country, is mm-hmm. it more of a digital connection, or is there a physical office that a a veteran can go to? So PVA, my program, the Veterans Career Program, we are nationwide. So we have staff around the country. A lot of the work that we do is is digital um, because people don't necessarily live where where we have offices and we want to make sure that we provide full coverage. But we have staff in, in Virginia, Georgia, Texas, California, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Philadelphia. So, so all around the country. And then PVA is a larger organization that is headquartered here in DC, also has a network of chapters. And these are independently run organizations that provide programming across 33 different uh, regions around the country. So we are a nationwide organization that provides significant support everywhere. You know, one thing is, uh, I think people have quickly understood is that COVID made you realize that you can work digitally. Yes. A lot of the work can get done from a digital landscape. So I'm sure that was very beneficial for you guys once everyone kind of got on board with what you guys were already doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we were really, I hate to say this in, in a weird way, but we were somewhat fortunate. So as a program, we went digital before everyone else. We got out of the traditional hiring fair uh, practice Actually, in January of 2020, we launched all of our virtual sessions that we call Veterans Career Live, um, which are really, again, it's it's a high touch, engaging way to learn about a variety of topics that are important to the entire veteran community. So we were pretty well set up um, when March of 2020 hit with online programming. Um we did this for a couple of reasons. We learned that there were a lot of accessibility challenges at a lot of the traditional hiring fairs. Um, we also knew that about 57% of veterans with a service-connected disability fear discrimination in the hiring process. These are adults with acquired acquired disabilities. They're not quite sure how to navigate this process. They're very intimidated by lines at hiring events or how to disclose. So we wanted to provide them with an offline, you know, kind of a let's get out of the the, the mix and let's have some conversations around it around ADA and what it means to you moving forward, around interviewing anxiety and dealing with job rejection. So we launched that um, pre-COVID and it just turned out really well. It's It's been very popular. Um, again, these are open to anyone in, in the veteran community. It's the same website, pva.org. You can either go to backslash veterans career program or pva.org backslash veterans career live. You know, I think you said something very important that I don't think many transitioning service members really thought about until, especially me, I just kind of had this light bulb moment that transitioning is scary, right? I'm going through that process right now. Right. And part of that is the fact that you're going to have to interview. You have to sell yourself. And that is so difficult for someone who's been in uniform for almost 20 years, selling myself instead of selling the team. Um, And I cannot imagine what that must be like if knowing that there are biases and there are stigmas that you've got to come, you know, get around or over or fully address head on in that interview process. I've had a few interviews myself and 
they were a little nerve wracking. They were on video camera and some of them were just telephone calls, but just trying to, I cannot imagine if, you know, you're, you want to tell your story and you want them to know that you're a valued member of the team without giving away so much of yourself. Cause you know, your marital status, the number of kids, your health, all of those things, they are not supposed to ask or know about. Right. But that's kind of hard if you're coming at this interview and you're in a wheelchair. I mean, right. that is a, that is so obvious. So I can't imagine. And thanks for bringing that up. But, you know, in your program, you talked about how to get around that. Um, you know, how, how do you work through that? And I think for our listeners, if you are in a situation where you find yourself, hey, I resonate with this, I am fearful and I've got some, you know, disabilities that I need to work through, you know, make sure that they check check out PVA because I, I don't know anybody else that's really doing that, that addresses that specific, you know, targeted demographic. It, it's super important. You know, uh, there a high number of veterans have some sort of service connected disability. Um, especially over the last 21 years, 20 years, right? People have been through multiple deployments. I mean, just the weight that people carry on a ruck can do add some challenges. So what we want to make sure is, is that everyone knows about the accommodations process, how to handle that. And it's unique. You know, there's there are things that we're going to tell you, you know, like you should disclose to the right person at work or at school. We actually just did a whole video series around this for uh those who are going back to school, how to use their disability resource office. We did this in partnership with Psych Armor and Student Veterans of America and Wounded Warrior Project, because it's super important to understand that process and that a lot of times it, it's a formal process. So having those conversations, knowing when to have them, knowing what, what documentation you need to have. But really, we want to make sure that people have confidence. You know, we just highlighted one of our members, Brian, who's been out of work for over 10 years. He was extremely intimidated by the employment process. He wasn't sure what to do. He was non-service connected. So he had some some money from Social Security Disability Insurance, but he was really worried about taking that leap. And that was a long conversation. It's not like we talk to somebody once and then we get them into a job. It's, again, it goes back to building that confidence, talking to them about what to expect. If something goes sideways, how do you handle it? You know, take a deep breath, have a conversation with the right people and move forward because you want people to be engaged and you want people to thrive. Um, but again, the challenge that we're seeing right now, so Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics just released their numbers. Not The unemployment rate for veterans with a service-connected disability of 60% or higher is 9.6%. That's more than three points above the naf- national average or what veterans in general are facing. So how do we engage them and make sure that they understand that there are opportunities to work and to be involved? It may involve going back to school. It may not. Maybe it's volunteering for a little while to find a new passion. We just don't want anyone to be left behind because they're worried about their disability. Absolutely. And getting those programs to them as well. Like they should be able to take every opportunity out there, the internships, the fellowships, the um, apprenticeships, all of those things, as well as going back to school um, and finding gainful employment. You know, you said something just now that um, had me doing a happy dance. At the end of the day, it's about networking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can't, I think I say that every single (laughs) podcast. It comes back to networking because I get asked that question. Well, why Always. Colonel Nunn should I be on social media? Why Colonel Nunn should I be doing these things? Because it is the old adage. It is not what you know. It is who you know. Who you know. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying who you know from a negative perspective. It's, hey, I met Lauren at a event and I realized that there is a service that her organization could be helpful to me. Let me right. call her up because I remember meeting her. I'm not this awkward person that she's never met or talked to. And she could say, Oh, I remember talking to you, Joe, let's have this conversation and let's figure it out. Because like you said, getting Brian that job wasn't a one-time conversation. That was a series of conversations, a series of days and events that help him get to where he's at. And so at the end of the day, network, right? Build an online profile, get, get active and be part of that community because you never know. When you're going to need it. Right. And ask questions. Don't be shy to, to reach out to that guy that was in your platoon or your unit 10 or 15 years ago. 
ask him, him or her about what they're doing now, what they like and don't like and who else they've talked to and who you should talk to. It, it's not a linear approach. Reach out to everyone, ask questions, engage. That's part of the process. It is. And I think people are just afraid to do that. It doesn't hurt to say, hello, I am. And this is what I'm looking for. Could you help me out? And maybe right. if you're not the one, can you point me to the person who may be the person that I could talk to? Absolutely. And I say that as a person who is known as the queen of navigating <laughs> and networking, I still am finding myself challenged in sometimes in some ways and getting the resource or the information that I need. And that's why I cannot keep harping enough. Network, network, network. Always. Lauren, you know, these conversations with you are always fun. Mm -hmm. Every time I see you at an event, I mean, we haven't seen each other, you know, recently because of COVID, but hopefully soon. But every time I see you, we always have these great conversations, whether it's about life, about the veteran space, but always good. Where, as we wrap this up, what is the one thing that you want our listeners to know or key in on about the work that you do with your organization? So the one thing that I want to stress to veterans who are trying to find their path is you don't have to go alone. There are a lot of people, a lot of organizations out there who want to support you, who will support you. So reach out, network, engage people, ask the questions. You can come to our uh, virtual sessions, pva.org backslash Veterans Career Live. They're very highly interactive. They're engaging. This isn't a webinar. It's a conversation around particular topics. And, you know, just start where you are with what you have. Take a step. That's what matters. Take a step. It doesn't have to be the biggest one, but constantly move forward. And you're not alone. I can't say that any better. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Lauren, thank you so much for spending your afternoon at Soldier for Life and talking about a very targeted demographic and the resources that are out there. Um, you know, that's what we do here at Soldier for Life. Share the resources, network, 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 and you know, if anything, lead and mentor those that need to know this information. So thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Absolutely. Once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life. <laughs>